week on The Communicators, we continue our look at Light Squared, a company that's trying to build a nationwide wireless broadband network. Well, last week on The Communicators, we talked with Sanjeev Ahuja, who is the chairman and CEO of Light Squared, a lot of political and scientific interest in the nationwide broadband uh, system that Light Squared is trying to build across the U.S. And this week, we're going to look at some other perspectives on the issue of Light Squared. And now joining us is Representative Paul Brown. He is the chairman of the Science Space Technology Subcommittee on Investigations. Now, Congressman Brown, you recently held a hearing That's correct. around Light Squared. We did. What was that hearing about and what did you learn? Well, Peter, we have been trying to get information from Light Squared because the information that we have been able to ascertain thus far is that this ground-based broadband network that Light Squared wants to put in place is being fast-tracked through the FCC, and this administration is pushing the FCC to approve Light Squared's uh, spectrum, which is right adjacent to all the GPS spectrum. Everything that we hear from all the experts is that this spectrum, if it's ground-based, which it wasn't designed to be, is going to interfere with everybody's GPS in their cars. It's going to interfere also with the high, uh, the, 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 the highly technical uh, GPSs that the science community utilizes, that the aviation community uses, that particularly the military uses. So the um, high-precision GPS very probably is going to be interfered with by Light Squared's going ahead with their ground-based system. Now, this, the spectrum was designed for a very low-intensity signal. It was designed to come uh, be a signal that was broadcast from satellites. But Light Squared is trying to push it through, and, and this administration seems to be doing also. We've written for a lot of documents. The administration has stalled on that. Peter, this is just a Another example of how this administration gives political favors to its major contributors. The FCC chairman is a good example, has bundled, the public record shows he's bundled over $500,000 to the administration. The CEO and uh, the own, major stock owner of Light Squared have given maximum contributions to this campaign, to the Obama campaign. They have uh, in fact, they set up dates to see senior administration officials the same day they wrote these checks, which kind of smells to me. And the administration has not given us the transparency that we've asked for. This administration has asked or has told the American public it's going to be totally transparent, but it, it has been very obscure and they have blocked every effort. And not only that, when we had the, we, when we had the hearing on September the 8th, it was almost a cookie cutter uh, type of testimony from the different administration officials that came before us. The day after we had our hearing, General Sheldon was at the uh, House Armed Services Committee and also testified on this issue. And he has publicly said that they, then this administration has put pressure on him to change his testimony. This is deplorable. It's ridiculous. And I'm just very concerned uh, Light Squared is subject to make billions of dollars of profit if they can be uh, given this, this spectrum. And the administration is doing everything that they can to, to fast track it through before it's been vetted, before we have any answers about interference with, with uh, GPS. And every expert that we can get and have come before us have, have told us that GPS is definitely going to be affected by Light Squared's ground-based uh, broadband spectrum. We've got to stop this. So what did you learn from when you had the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration there? You had Department of Transportation at your hearing, NASA. Um, was the FCC present at your hearing? No. And they were not. They refused to come. And, and we've requested through our committee, we've requested a lot of different documents, uh, emails, etc. And they've just not been forthcoming at all about these documents. They've just stonewalled. They've done everything that they can to prevent us from getting the information that we need. 
We have the oversight. We have the responsibility of making sure that the American public and particularly the U.S. government entities, such as our U.S. military, is not going to be harmed by this spectrum. But the Obama administration is just uh, forcing it through without vetting it, without doing anything, and not giving us the information so that we can even know uh, what's going on. And they're trying to do this on a fast track so that the investors or potential investors will go ahead and invest in this business that's going to give the major people who own Light Squared the, the kind of profits that are going to be tens of billions of dollars. And it's going to be the expense of the military and particularly the aviation community as well as government entities such as NOAA and, and NIST and other entities that require this high precision GPS measurements. Light Squared is going to interfere with those from everything that we can ascertain at this time. Okay. We need to slow th this process down. The FCC needs to stop trying to fast track this. And we need to do everything we can to, to make sure that we have a proper vetting of everything dealing with this spectrum before Barack Obama gives these, and this administration gives these political favors to, to his major contributors. When we talked with Mr. Ahuja last week, he mm -hmm. talked about the vetting process that you've mentioned. Here's what he had to say. The process that is really relevant here is 2003 and 2005 process. 2010 <clears throat> was a very relative, the change of control was a very long, several months long process. Okay. I don't know how it could have been a longer and a more detailed or a more comprehensive process. This is as comprehensive a process I've seen anywhere, globally. Congressman Brown. He's absolutely wrong. They say that they can have filters and they've made some arrangements with a company to permit, to, to give us filters to, that supposedly will not, uh, will prevent the interference, but we don't know. Those filters haven't even been developed. How can we know? We need to have that information. So uh, he's just written big checks to the Obama campaign. Uh, the people all involved across the board with Light Squared, multiple of the, the major people with the company have written big checks to, to the Obama campaign. And uh, they're, they're trying to force it through the FCC. The FCC's already given some preliminary okays to go ahead, and we just don't know. It needs to be slowed down. We need to have a proper vetting. We need to find out what the situation is. This whole spectrum was not designed for a land-based broad broadband. There are other companies also. This administration is picking winners and losers, and the winners that they pick are the people who write big checks to the Obama campaign, and so it just is not right. You don't this is just like Solyndra. This is another one of these cases where the Obama administration is trying to force uh, the American people to accept something to, to give tremendous profits to the Obama's uh, political supporters, and it's just not right. So you're not seeing promise in the technology that Light Squared is, is proposing? We don't know, and that's the thing about it. And there's a tremendous potential, everything we can hear, there's a tremendous potential that Light Square's ground-based broadband is going to interfere with high-precision GPS. If it can be prevented, fine. But the administration shouldn't be picking winners and losers. Certainly they should not be trying to force things through the FCC and through the regulatory bodies before we have a proper vetting, just like Solyndra. We're getting almost daily information about how there were many warning signs down the road uh, through the Bush administration. In fact, the Bush administration refused to give them the, the loans. Uh, the Obama administration just forced it through. Why? Because they were big supporters of, Obama, of the president. And this is the same thing that's happening here. The FCC, who was a big supporter, big bundler for the administration, is taking care of his buddies, it looks like to me. And uh, the military could be harmed. Commercial interests could be harmed. And Solyndra, uh, I'm sorry, well, Light Square is saying that all of us, I've got an, a I'm a pilot, I've got an aviation GPS. And Light Square is saying that, that I need to spend extra money. The airlines need to spend extra money. Anybody in aviation, as well as the, the they said that they would give $50 million to the government for filters, 
but the experts tell us that the filters are going to cost billions of dollars. Fifty million is not going to scratch it. So we've we've just got to slow this process down. It has to be vetted. We need transparency from the administration. We need to have all the the request granted and give us the information that we need in our committee so that we can really look at this and understand what's going on before this administration, before the FCC okays light squared going ahead with with their uh, ground-based broadband. And finally, Congressman Brown, in a letter September 20th to John Holdren, the director of the Office of Science and Technology mm -hmm. Policy, you ask him for some documents. Absolutely. What, what do you ask him for? And this was well, all whole, the Republicans on the uh, on your committee signed off on this letter, but no Democrats. That's correct. Right. Okay. We we uh, asked for a lot of documents, emails, uh, scientific documents, anything that we could get from the administration, but they stonewalled. We can't get information from NOAA. We can't get in, in, uh, any information from. Department of Homeland Security, we can't get information from the administration. They're withholding it. We're, we have the responsibility of making sure that taxpayers' dollars are spent wisely and that taxpayers are not going to be harmed and the business interests are not going to be harmed, that jobs are not going to be harmed by what this administration is doing. And they're stone, stonewalling all the same time. They're just trying to force through the okay for Light Squared to be able to put in place their ground-based broadband system. It's not right. I'm just asking all the administration to produce what we need to be able to, to vet this and the FCC needs to stop this process until we can get that information and we can go forward in a transparent way so that we can find out what the science is and, and, um, and what the ramifications of this system that Light Squared wants to put you in put place. You put an October 7th deadline in your letter. If you don't get the information, what happens next? Well, we're going to keep on trying. We'll, we'll use every, every uh, tool that we have. Including in, subpoenas? In, well, if we have to, absolutely. Uh, and we have that power. We have the, power, the power to subpoena people out of the administration. If we, if we need to, absolutely, we'll do that. We've got to, to get this information, and it's very timely that we do it. So if we don't hear anything by October 7th, we're going to start knocking on their door again very strongly. Representative Paul Brown is chairman of the House Science, Space, and Technology Subcommittee on Investigations. He's a third-term Republican from Georgia. He also happens to be a medical doctor and, as he said, an airline pilot. <laughs> Thank you. Not an airline pilot. I'm a civilian pilot. Yeah, right. I'm a right, civilian pilot. Right, civilian pilot. That's right. Congressman he Brown. He uses GPS, and I'm really concerned about that. And I'm concerned about the housewives that have a, a Garmin GPS in their in their car to try to find out where they gonna go pick up their babysitter. And Light Squared very possibly, in fact, probably can interfere with her GPS. So we can't have that happen. Up next, we're going to talk to a GPS manufacturer. And now on your screen is Jim Kirkland, who is Vice President and General Counsel of Trimble Navigation. He is also a founding member of the Coalition to Save Our GPS. He joins the communicators from Mountain View, California. First off, Mr. Kirkland, what is Trimble Navigation and what is the Coalition to Save Our GPS? Sure, Peter. Trimble Navigation is the leading manufacturer of GPS equipment for commercial and industrial use. So we focus on high-end industrial applications like agriculture, construction, uh, survey, you name it. The Coalition to Save Our GPS was founded after an initial FCC decision last January granted a waiver to LightSquare to proceed with its uh, build-out of its network. And we're, our mission is to educate policymakers on the GPS industry and the implications of that proposal. And uh, we've been very active on that. Jim Kirkland, uh, last week on the communicators, we talked with Sanjeev Ahuja, the chairman and CEO mm -hmm. of Light Squared. And essentially, what he told us was he understood the concerns. And what they have done is they have moved their spectrum usage as far away as possible within their, their spectrum uh, from GPS units to mitigate the danger? Sure. So, you know, the issue here uh, is that 
The technical evidence so far in front of the FCC still shows interference even from these modified plans. And that interference affects things like plans, try, planes trying to land safely, uh, managing logistics and training our troops stateside, uh, farmers using precision agriculture to more efficiently manage their farms. And the GPS industry is committed to following through that process and trying to figure out if there's a technical solution, but so far no technical solution has been proven to the satisfaction of the FCC. So is it the technology itself that troubles you or where the spectrum is located or what? So the interference issues can arise from a couple things. You know, one way you manage interference is by geographic separation. So for example, you don't have two TV stations operating on the same frequency in the, mar in the same market they are separated by geographic area, and that helps manage interference. The other way you deal with interference is by keeping dissimilar uses pretty far apart. So right now, all the wireless networks that operate at high power, like LightSquared is proposing to do, are, are very much further away from the GPS band than where LightSquared uh, is proposing to use some satellite spectrum to provide terrestrial. So it's really a very difficult interference and engineering problem because you, you have no geographic separation. A GPS receiver could be right next door to a light squared broadcasting tower, and you have no separation in the frequency band. So these transmissions are extremely close to the GPS band, and a combination of those two things presents a very serious interference, and it also makes it a very difficult engineering problem to solve. Is it not solvable in your view? So there's been progress made through some of the proposals. LightSquared has changed the proposal multiple times over the last six or seven months. And as they change the proposal to move further away in the spectrum band and also decrease their power, they reduce the level of interference, but no one's been able to show or conclude yet that they eliminate it for critical uses like aviation, national security, you know, precision agriculture. And that's what the FCC has an ongoing study process to determine. The GPS industry is fully participating in that study process. And, uh, you know, we're committed to working through the process and seeing if there is a solution. That solution really needs to be uh, very strongly demonstrated, however, before you take risks on, on things like aviation safety. Now, Mr. Kirkland, there have been some issues raised whether or not the FCC and the NTIA, NOAA, et cetera, are, are uh, fully vetting light squared as they should. Do you have those same concerns? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, not currently. I think, you know, the FCC and the NTIA both were unified in the last couple of weeks saying there will be more studies to determine this. Uh, and, you know, the right, the right answer here is to complete that process and see, you know, if there are in fact solutions that are proven to work. So far, the technical evidence doesn't support that, but, you know, we're willing to keep working on that. Jim Kirkland, last week in our interview with Sanjeev Ahuja of, of Light Squared, he talked about the length of the process. And here's what he had to, had to say, and I'd like to get your response. Since 2001, 2002, 2003, 2005, some of these commercial device manufacturers, all of them have been aware that there is going to be a terrestrial network in this spectrum. If I'm buying a product, that the manufacturer of the product, if I look at it my personal vantage point, manufacturer of the product knew very well that there are, there's a potential network coming in the neighborhood of that because it's been allocated, it has been allowed. FCC has specifically specified the specifications of how that network would look like. I would make sure the devices that I make work. And actually, Cecilia, 400 plus million of those devices work fine. Jim Kirkland. So there's a lot packed in there. I think I'll start with what he said last, and that is he says that 400 million devices work fine. That's in fact what the FCC and NTIA just said a couple weeks ago has not yet been proven and requires more study. So I think that remains to be seen. I think as far as uh, what the FCC approved in the past, if you go back and look at the orders, 
Um, the spectrum they're proposing to use is mobile satellite spectrum. So it was allocated to allow uh, transmissions from a satellite for mobile communications purposes. And in 2001 and 2003, what the FCC allowed was what they called ancillary terrestrial service. And the point of all of that was to fill in holes in the satellite footprint. So in urban areas, there are what we call urban canyons where the satellite signals might be blocked by tall buildings. And the FCC said, well, in order to improve the mobile satellite service, we're going to allow them to build what they called fill-in uh, transmitters on the ground to, to help supplement the satellite service. Uh, and that was all very clear, and the GPS industry had a very good working relationship with LightSquared's predecessors. This is a new management team and new owners. And so long as everyone understood that that's what the terrestrial operations were for, the GPS industry, the government agencies, everyone was fine. I think what's happened now in November 2010 is LightSquared came forward and said, we want to provide terrestrial only broadband service and we want to build a nationwide broadband network with 40,000 high powered transmitters throughout the US. And that's definitely not what the commission authorized in 2001, 2003. So of course, GPS manufacturers were not going to design their products contemplating something that simply wasn't authorized. And I think that's a key point because once you understand what the FCC authorized and what the differences are, you know, you also see where the interference problem comes from because it's much more uh, geographically uh, ubiquitous, much, you know, higher power, basically trying to cover 92% of the population. So finally, Jim Kirkland, do you think uh, Light Squared's concept needs to be junked? Not at all. I think what, what we need to do is to demonstrate what power levels they can operate at, what spectrum they can operate at, and it may be that um, the limits on, that, uh, on their proposal need to be much stricter than what they've offered. And I think that's been a lot of the issue so far is how can they operate without causing interference to GPS? And if that's proven, then I think everyone in the government and the GPS industry will be happy to cooperate. So far, it hasn't been proven. Jim Kirkland is the Vice President and General Counsel of Trimble Navigation, founding member of the Coalition to Save Our GPS. SaveOurGPS.org is the website. Thank you, Mr. Kirkland. Up next, a political discussion about the issues surrounding Light Squirt. And now joining us on the communicators is Fred Schulte. He's with iWatch News, where he's a senior reporter, and he's also with the Center for Public Integrity. Mr. Schulte, why has CPI been writing a series of articles, or you specifically been writing a series of articles about Light Squared and its White House connections? Well, my colleagues and I have been writing about, first of all, about bundlers to the uh, 2008 Obama presidential campaign. Those were the donors who put together large groups of, of donations of $50,000 or more, and maybe even up to $500,000. And we were looking at uh, what kinds of, what they got. And did they get anything for their money? Or were they getting jobs? Were they getting access to the White House? Were they getting contracts? And that sort of thing. So we've written a number of stories about a number of different uh, companies that um, have sort of been swept up in this whole uh, political question, one of which was Light Squared. And what did you find with regard to Light Squared and the White House? Well, Light Squared, we originally wrote about them uh, in connection with one of our campaign bundlers, uh, Donald Gibbs, who, who was an investor in the company at the time that they applied to get this waiver from the Federal Communications Commission. Also, uh, President Obama appointed uh, one of the big campaign bundlers, Julius Janikowski, to head the FCC. So there was immediately a controversy when Light Squared tried to come before them as to whether there was uh, some, uh, some uh, politics uh, at play. Is it illegal to, to uh, work with people who are friendly to your campaign or to your No, it's not, illegal, not illegal at all. I mean, I think that one of the, the, the bedrock sort of, of our coverage of this issue had been around the premise that when uh, Barack Obama w announced his candidacy as the presidential candidate, one of the things he said is that he was going to, uh, you know, drain the swamp and end business as usual in Washington and, um, uh, you know, not let lobbyists uh, have the run of the place and, and do these kinds of things. And so we thought that, well, 
given what we do at the Center for Public Integrity, that we ought to look at, you know, what, is, what it has in fact happened with regard to major donors. Did you find anything questionable, Mr. Schulte, in the emails between the White House and Light Squared that um, you'd like to share? Well, when we, we filed the F Freedom of Information Act request and got back from the White House uh, a, number of, a number of emails and a number of other, other records, and we were a little bit surprised by the tone of the emails, frankly, that, that some of them, they, they were very chatty and, and friendly, but the thing that really caught our eye was that um, uh, representatives of Light Squared had uh, said that uh, their CEO was coming into town and wanted to have a meeting with them and he was going to be in town because he was having a meeting or he was going to be participating in a fundraiser with the, the president and on that same day he did in fact give thirty thousand uh, dollar contributions so the way that was sort of subtly or not too subtly depending on your point of view linked uh, did raise some questions for us. Well now last week we interviewed Sanjeev Ahuja the chairman and CEO of Light Squared and uh, Cecilia Kong of the Washington Post was our guest reporter. She asked him specifically about these emails. How would you respond to questions raised by this very extensive report by the Center of Public Integrity that emails were exchanged in, you know, between White House officials and Light Squared officials to get meetings um, with White House um, personnel um, at the time when you're donating to campaigns, the company? company officials were. Cecilia, when you're building a significant network and when you're making a significant technology investment in a country and you look at whether they're telecom operators, technology companies, you pick up the newspaper, open it, they're CEOs of all of these companies meeting with various government officials. As I said, I have businesses in 30 countries over my career. You go meet with different government officials all the time. Mr. Schulte, what did you hear in that answer? Uh, well, I did. He, what did he say? <laughs> he didn't say anything about uh, the campaign contributions. I mean, I think he's he seems to be saying that it's sort of business as usual and and you know we don't have a position on that one way or the other you know like I said we we started covering these kinds of issues because the candidate who became president of the United States in fact made an issue out of access and people with a lot of money getting access to power and getting grants and that that sort of thing and he said very clearly that that wasn't going to happen in his administration and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm, there's nothing illegal about giving a campaign contribution, and uh, it may in fact be business as usual, but, but we cover the relationship between money and politics, and uh, he seems to be acknowledging that there is one. So, uh, what would you like to see done with this information that you've put out there on your website, and uh, the best place to find that would be iwatchnews.org, correct? If, right, if that's people right. want to read these emails. Uh, what do you think should be done with this? Should Light Squared be prohibited, in your view, from uh, being allowed to build its network because of its connections uh, to the White House? Well, honestly, I have no opinion on that. I don't think I could really do my job if I had an opinion on that because then I'd get into one side or the other. And uh, I mean, I think that um, there obviously are some people that have some serious issues with Light Squared. I mean, at the Center for Public Integrity, I mean, we're not among them. We're just covering the relationship between money and politics. And did you find that there were investors from the Obama administration or campaign that were in, uh, that had invested in Light Squared's predecessor companies? Yes, yes, including, what did you find? Uh, uh, well, Senator Obama himself had, at one time, had an investment in it. It's a, it's a company that's had a lot of people that uh, were tied to the Obama administration in one way or another as uh, investors or supporters. But then again, in, you know, in, in defense of them, I mean, they, they believe in what they're doing here. And so they, sometimes you invest in things that you, you believe in. And sometimes there's a political angle to all that. Will you continue to write about Light Squared as events unfold? Or is, it, is there something else that you're writing about at the moment? Well, we don't usually discuss what we got going on, on until we until we publish it. But we are in ten, in definitely uh, continuing to cover this issue and the bundlers issue and campaign and the relationship between campaign money and campaign finance and uh, Washington. 
Fred Schulte is a senior reporter with iWatch News. iWatchNews.org is the website in case you would like to see their reports or read the emails uh, between the White House and Light Squared officials. Mr. Schulte is a four-time Pulitzer Prize finalist. He spent much of his career at the Baltimore Sun and the South Florida Sun Sentinel. He's received the George Polk Award, two Investigative Reporter and Editor's Award, three Gerald Loeb Awards for business writing. Mr. Schulte, thank you for being on The Communicators. Well, thank you, Peter. It's my pleasure.